Okay, so Pluto, that super far off, mysterious world, used to be a planet. But now, some brainy astrophysicists like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku are saying it might crash into Neptune. Seriously, how could that even happen, and what would it do if it did? It's either some weird space thing, or something huge about to go down. So, let's check out what could happen if Pluto and Neptune smash into each other. Even though Pluto is a dwarf planet now, not a full-blown planet, people are still really interested in it. And when experts start talking about possible crashes, you know it's serious. Pluto's path gets super close to Neptune's, which is why Tyson, Kaku, and others are worried about a smash-up that could mess things up for Earth. But how could it actually happen? Pluto takes a whopping 248 years to go around the sun once. Since we found it in 1930, it hasn't even finished one trip. Plus, its orbit is weird, it's not a nice circle like the other planets, but is tilted at an angle of 17 degrees. Here's the crazy part. For about 20 years every orbit, Pluto gets closer to the sun than Neptune does. So, why haven't they bumped into each other? Other planets' gravity keeps them apart. When Pluto was first found, astronomers started looking at its path. Unlike most planets, Pluto's orbit is tilted and shaped weirdly. And, get this, Pluto's orbit actually crosses Neptune's. But somehow, it stays steady. That's because of how things move in space. It's like trying to figure out how three things, like Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun, pull on each other with gravity. It's like guessing where things will go based on where they start and how they pull on each other. In Pluto's case, it shows how its orbit, Neptune's, and the Sun's gravity work together in a tricky way. Astrophysicists use terms like asynchronous libration, orbital precession, and co-i-oscillation to explain this. Asynchronous libration means that when Pluto crosses Neptune's path, it's always far away from Neptune. Orbital precession means Pluto's orbit moves up a bit, so when it gets close to Neptune, it's above Neptune's path. And co -I oscillation is how Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun's gravity affect each other to keep Pluto's orbit steady. So, all these things help keep Pluto from crashing into Neptune or wandering off too far. It's like even things that look random in space follow secret rules. Back in the 80s, some math whizzes did some calculations. They found out that even with all this keeping Pluto steady, its path is actually unpredictable. If you change things just a tiny bit at the start, it could change a lot over time. But, it looks like Pluto's orbit stays pretty stable over really, really long times. Other studies have helped us see how Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn affect Pluto's orbit. Neptune and Pluto have a special relationship. For every two laps Pluto makes around the Sun, Neptune makes three. This helps steady Pluto's orbit. Jupiter's huge gravity also helps keep Pluto from drifting too close to Neptune. And Saturn's gravity adds another layer of stability. Basically, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune work together to make sure Pluto doesn't crash into anything. Without all this gravity stuff, the solar system could be wild. Things like Pluto could crash into other planets or get thrown out of the solar system. We need to understand Pluto's orbit, especially with people talking about it crashing into Neptune. It helps us understand how our little corner of space works. Pluto is a good example of how even orbits that seem shaky can find a balance with help from gravity and how things move in space. It also shows why we need to keep watching and studying to understand our place in the universe. Space stuff can be super weird, and Pluto's orbit is a great example. Orbital chaos means even small changes to where Pluto starts or how fast it's going can change its orbit a lot. Researchers use computers to run simulations and understand how Pluto moves in space. They use math to figure out how Pluto, Neptune, and other stuff in the solar system pull on each other with gravity. By changing little things in the simulations, they can see how even tiny changes can make Pluto's path totally different. Back in the 80s, these simulations showed some cool stuff about Pluto's orbit. Even though things like asynchronous libration and orbital precession help keep it steady, Pluto's orbit can still get weird if things change even a little bit at the start. But even with all the chaos, 
Pluto's orbit stays stable for billions of years. It means that even though Pluto's trip around the sun seems unpredictable, there's actually something keeping it in order. It's really hard to guess where things in space will go, especially when they have weird orbits like Pluto. These systems are so unpredictable that it's hard to guess what they'll do in the long run. Math models help us understand and guess what will happen, but they also show us what we can't know. They depend on getting the starting information right, and even a tiny mistake can change what happens a lot. Planetary orbits like Pluto's remind us that the universe is always changing. We've learned a lot about space, but Pluto shows us how much more there is to find out. The gravity of the big planets on Pluto's orbit tells us a lot about how the solar system works. It shows how where each planet is can really change where other things are and how steady they are. So, why are some big shot astrophysicists talking about Pluto crashing into Neptune now, even with all these things keeping them apart? Neil deGrasse Tyson has a unique take on the mysteries of the solar system, especially Pluto. He even helped reclassify Pluto as a dwarf planet. He sees renaming Pluto as not making it less important, but just changing things to reflect what we've learned about all the different things orbiting the sun. He thinks the weirdness of orbits like Pluto's shows how much there is still to explore in space and makes space exploration exciting. Even though Tyson is optimistic, he's still worried about Pluto crashing into Neptune, which means there's a lot we don't know about Pluto's orbit. Will Pluto crash into Neptune, or is this just some confusion in the ever-changing cosmos? Only time and more study will tell. For now, we just have to be even more curious about how little we know about our own solar system. We'll keep studying space stuff to find out all the secrets out there. The idea of Pluto and Neptune crashing raises even more questions about the strange and awesome universe we live in. The idea of Pluto and Neptune hitting each other challenges what we know about how steady planets are, especially with how strong their orbits are right now. Pluto's on the edge of the solar system, far from the major planets, and Neptune's a gas giant with a strong gravity field. The effects of a crash like that would be huge for understanding gravity and how the solar system has changed over time. To understand how a crash could happen, you have to think about what Pluto and Neptune are made of. Pluto's a dwarf planet, but it's made of stuff that's frozen solid because it's so cold out there. Its surface is covered in nitrogen ice, and its air is mostly nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Neptune, on the other hand, is a huge gas planet made of hydrogen, helium, and other light stuff with a thick, deep atmosphere. If these two totally different things crashed, it would change how they look and act. Something like that could be seen from super far away.